Big fam. Good morning. Figs and coffee. Today, we're going to be short and sweet. I have a lot of fig trees. <laughs> Look at all these fig trees. <laughs> I mean, I love it. And I got some space to put a fig tree in the ground. So let's do it. <sighs> it's quite simple, but there are things you can do to kind of jumpstart it, right? Rev that engine and get it fired out the gate quickly. There are some aspects of where you want to put it in your yard. And there's some tips of where you want to plant your tree that I can show you. Uh, what I'm doing today is I'm planting it right over here and here. As you can see, there's some shade here, but it'll get full sun in the later afternoon. Uh, you definitely want that at least half day or more of full sun with a fig tree. A lot of people say full sun, they will do great in full sun. But if you have partial shade, they will grow too. You just want to have some full sun at a given point in the day. Guys, let's put a fig tree in the ground. Just for the record, winter, spring kale, sweet. All right. When we put a fig tree in the ground, we want to make the hole about twice as big as the root ball itself. And we are going to dig that hole and we are going to kind of shred the sides of that hole. When we put the fig tree in the ground, I have two options you can choose from. I have a 50-50 topsoil and compost blend that I get from my local compost company, Wilmington Compost, and it feels good. It's got a pH about 6.5, which is perfect for fig trees. And I am going to backfill my hole for this fig tree with that material. If you don't have that material, a lot of times what I will do is I'll get a bag of compost. So this is another local company here that has organic mushroom compost, which I really like. I believe when you have like mushroom compost, I think it's really desirable for mycelium and mycorrhizae. And I think it just helps incorporate the tree into the soil and the microbiome. It's kind of why I choose mushroom compost versus cow manure or horse manure or chicken manure. Not to say that those don't work extremely well. It's just me being extra nerdy. <laughs> So if you don't have like a compost blend that I'm using, just grab a bag of compost. And what you can do is when you dig out that hole, use that material, mix it with the compost, and then you can put that back on top of the tree. So let's go ahead and dig that hole. And I'll tell you some things to look out for while I dig. You guys can see it's partially shaded here, and that's okay. The reason I'm putting a tree here is that I've kind of run out of all my sunny spaces for trees. And I have partially shaded spaces that still get a good afternoon of sunlight. So if you look up above me, whoa, I have this big water oak that I pruned back about one or two years ago. And if you look over here, I have all this afternoon sun that this tree will get, especially when the tree rises over the fence. So I want to have the main trunk of this tree about two to three feet off the fence. I want that airflow, that space there. I'm in a pretty hot, humid climate. So I might move it right about here. I want it in the middle of the fence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Middle. All right, so we'll put it right in the middle here. And I'm going to put the biggest branches in the back on the shadier side and the smaller branches in the front. And it'll help it grow evenly. And again, I'm looking at two and a half feet off of this fence. So I'm going to make X marks the spot and, and a hole. And that's where I'm going to dig from. If you're wondering where to put a fig tree on your property, south facing is a great option. West facing is a great option. Southwest facing is an even better option because you get all that afternoon sun and you get all that wintertime sunlight and early spring sunlight and late fall sunlight. I've heard a concept that figs like to have their roots shaded and their leaves in sun. And that typically means they like to be near structures so they can shade their roots, the roots can grow underneath and they can be in full sun. A lot of people grow them up against the sides of their homes, up against the sides of fences, sheds, you name it. I actually think they do pretty well in that kind of environment and they do do well in full sun environments. I've seen them completely shaded underneath trees before too. Uh, I'm only partially shaded underneath this tree before it gets full sun all afternoon. So figs, which I'm starting to find, can grow anywhere and everywhere. Sometimes it just takes a matter of time, but there are a few varieties that do well in shadier spots than others, which is why I picked out this Negroni. And also next to it, 
is this Rhone de Bordeaux that was heavily pruned for cuttings for all you guys this winter. It's starting to put out new growth here, here, and here, which I'm really excited for. And it's gonna go in the ground right next to this Negroni. These two trees do well. I don't know if it's because they have smaller figs. I don't know if it's because they're known to be uh, cold tolerant, which means they're more resilient, but they seem to do well in shadier spaces. I've seen this Violet de Bordeaux type fig, Negrone, or Beers Black, grown as far north as Pittsburgh, and it grows in more of a bush form, and it dies back to the ground every year and comes up, gives a new crop, which is very similar to Hardy Chicago and Rhone de Bordeaux. So let's go ahead and dig this hole. It's about a seven gallon pot here, maybe a 10 gallon. Maybe I can just snap my fingers and then the hole will be here. Sound good, guys? All right, ready? And go. Way easier. <laughs> Let's take a look inside. So I have this nice deep hole. And here's something to note if you guys find out you have good soil. Because right here, I have good soil. It can clump, but it can break apart nicely. And it's deep and it's black, rich in organic material. If you find you have soil like this, you may not need to amend it with a 50-50 mix like I'm going to do today, or even compost if you're in a pinch. I always recommend adding some if you have some, because it'll jumpstart your fig tree right out the gate. I believe that this hole twice the size of my seven to 10 gallon pot. So let's take a look. Not bad. I'm not gonna bury it like this. I am actually gonna bring it up to the soil surface and all of this will be filled with my compost amendment. One thing to take note here is when I start adding my amendment, I don't want to keep a hard surface here. I want it to be inviting for roots. So I'm actually going to shear this up with my shovel a little bit. And then those shear marks will loosen up the soil around it. And so despite it having really good soil here, it still encourages it to grow outward and establish itself in ground. And this will help for years ahead. It won't stunt its growth and you won't have to water it. It'll start to be able to take up its own water, especially if you're in the Southeast where we get consistent rain. If you live in a drier climate, sorry, you're gonna to have to water your tree for a few more years before it takes on a root system large enough to feed itself. So I'm going to shear this up for the tree. as well as deep. Check this thing out. We can do this as well. All right. So let's go ahead, put this tree in the ground. I'm going to go ahead and add my soil amendment. So this is the half compost, half topsoil blend going right into the hole. And this is why you wanted to build it twice as deep and twice as wide as the ball itself and shred the edges so we can gradually incorporate this whole fig tree into the ground. Now I'm gonna make kind of like you would in a potting mix where you make this little bowl here, and you insert the tree. Look, it could have grown another year in this pot. It has lots of roots, but it has not totally root bound itself yet. And I'm gonna kind of eyeball measure it up to the soil line, if not more. Sometimes you put a little higher than the soil line. This soil is so loose that raining, settling over time will create a small amount of subsidence and that tree will sink down. That's why you want it as close to the surface and plump as possible so it doesn't sink too far down below. And figs just like surface roots. They like to have a shallower root system that will spread out wide over time. And that's why you want to create an inviting environment with your soil amendments with an extra deep hole. And then a lot of fruit trees behave that way, right? Especially if they are propagated, they won't necessarily have that deep tap root and they will just want to grow over time. So let's go ahead and fill this back up. And it looks like it's right at the surface here, which I'm really excited about. It sinks a little bit. I'm not too worried about it. Again, we want this to be simple. Figs are resilient. They will grow over time. But I really like how this is looking. It's a very beautiful tree, a nice main trunk, your scaffolding branches, and you're seeing secondary branches here. So we may even see a good amount of growth and fruit this year. And then I just want to make sure that this is vertical. I'm going to dump my compost mix back in. Yoo-hoo! Easy peasy. Brush it around, make it nice and firm, level. You can see this is only like a one or two, two year old tree. I still have the original cutting here that it grew off of wrapped in its parafilm wax tape. You can see we're right at that surface grass line, which is beautiful. I'm going to dump a little more. All right. Now I'm actually going to use the leftover material that it was pre-existing in here 
to fill up the rest of the hole. Why? Is because it's still rich and black and full of good organic material. And then I'm going to fill back on top. What's good about also putting the soil that you dug up back in is because it has an existing biome that'll help the tree adapt, taking up nutrients from the soil. Yeah, this stuff is still nice and good and dark and rich, rich soil. I'm very fortunate that my property has that. It used to be way more wooded before we moved here and they cleared out some trees. And I think the breaking down of that organic material ultimately meshed itself with the existing sandy soil and created a good, well-draining environment. I'm just tamping it down to see where that soil line is, see where my grass line is. And then I want to see where those roots start to spread out from the tree. And that'll be the surface. I can see right here. I'm right at that surface line. Beautiful. So guys, it's really that simple. If you do those few little pieces. So digging the hole twice as wide, making sure that you're adding good amended soil if you have poor soil conditions, shredding the inside of your hole to help roots grow outwards and downwards, and then making your fig tree level with the grass soil surface. So I'm just gonna screed here and spread this around just to clean it up a little bit because everyone likes a clean yard. <laughs> and then I'll just collect the soil here. But there's one last thing we have to do. I'm going to take this existing space and I'm going to make this little, I'm a geologist, so I'm going to nerd out and call it a type of volcano, but it's called a caldera. And it basically is creating this ring. So when you start to water your tree, it captures all the water in the middle and keeps it from getting away from your tree. It's a great hack. If anyone likes to make sandcastles, here's your chance for it to contribute to your gardening. <laughs> I got my surface roots here and I have my little soil volcano or my little soil caldera to trap water. So let's go and like any tree that you transplant to a new pot, any tree that you transplant to the ground, you want to give it a large drink of water. All right. And here is the advantage of making that caldera volcano. You made a little birdbath sized space for the water to focus right on the fig tree. I'm gonna wash my hands while I water it. <laughs> and that should be plenty. If you wanna mulch it, you can. It'll be really smart to do so when it gets really hot this summer. Mulch is a great way of not only keeping, look at this, this is how good my soil is guys. I accidentally, see this earthworm? I'm gonna put it underneath this dirt here. Um, you can see it's already sinking down and it's going to fully just immerse that root system and that new soil system and get it comfortable. But if you want to mulch it, that's the next step. I have to go buy some mulch. I'm going to mulch everything in my yard in one big purchase. But this, look, it's already drained down. It's a really simple way with some smart tips to put a fig tree in the ground and have it take off growing for you. So if you like this, please subscribe, follow me along. I'm going to check in on this tree over the course of the spring and summer and see how much fruit I get. And I hope you guys can join me for that too. We can see the progress of a tree going from in a pot that's about two years old into the ground and seeing it mature into a tree. And I'm hopeful that it'll get as high as this fence line this year. Fig trees are notorious for growing great their young years of life and producing figs in their young years of life. So thanks for watching, Fig Fam. I hope this helped you. Please let me know how you guys put trees in the ground in the comments, and I would love to collaborate with you and see how this was helpful for you as well. All right, take care, Fig Fam. And like Bob Ross says, happy trees.